We always see tons of ads from different plug-in companies modeling many different types of analog gear from the likes of Waves, Universal Audio, SoftTube, Plugin Alliance, Sound Toys, etc. Do you understand why these are popular? And do you understand why these are such coveted emulations? It's all about how it affects the sound. Join me today as we talk about some of the components in analog gear such as tubes and transistors and how we can use them to enhance our sound. But before we move on, quick definition. What is distortion? Distortion is any change that happens to a signal in a system, okay? Any change. This is important, okay? Okay. Tubes, 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 tubes. Tubes, also known as vacuum tubes, are devices that control the flow of current. In the audio world, tubes function as an amplifier of electrical signals. Now, tubes and transistors both add odd and even harmonics, but tubes emphasize the even harmonics. There's a myth that tubes only impart even harmonics. That's not true. They impart both. They just emphasize the even harmonics. This becomes apparent when the tubes are overdriven. So when we drive it a little hard. So what's harmonics or harmonic distortion? Harmonic distortion is the addition of frequencies to any signal. So frequencies that weren't there originally. They usually occur at integer multiples. So with even harmonics, if I had a 100 hertz tone, even harmonics would be 200 hertz, 400 hertz, 600 hertz, etc. Even order harmonics are typically accepted as more pleasing, smoother, and richer in quality. Transistors, transistors, transistors. Transistors are semiconductors which control the flow of current as well. So, both tubes and transistors control the flow of current. It's used as an amplifier as well. Transistors or solid state electronics emphasize odd order harmonics. Like I said earlier, they both add even and odd harmonics, but transistors emphasize odd order harmonics. So for a tune of 100 hertz, it would impart 300 hertz, 500 hertz, 700 hertz, etc. These are perceived as a bit harsher a bit grittier. It's easy to compare the effects of these two by comparing the transients when overloading the system. So let's talk about the comparison between tubes and transistors. So tubes are not as efficient and more delicate because they have a filament inside that needs to be heated. Transistors tend to be durable and more efficient. However, some tubes can generate a lot more power than their transistor counterparts. Examples of this are radio frequency transmitters. By the way, disclaimer, it should be noted that it's not just the tube or the transistor that contribute into whatever sound you're hearing okay the circuit design also has a huge part to play so this is just broad topic right now so yeah how the circuit is designed has a huge part in coloring the sound in coloring the sound so let's look at an example of how we could affect our mix by taking advantage of the distortion characteristics of these components and we will use the LA2A tube compressor and a free Phi L Audio 2 preamp, which is free. You can check it out. I'll link wherever, blah, blah, blah. And we will hear what the difference is as well. So I have this track here. Let's do a quick listen. take the hat off this saxophone all the saxes together now this is nice but I wanted to have a little more presence okay and I want to add some color so let's open up the free one for this, this two preamp. I have this on a return track. I could put it on the main track, but I want to mix in blend the different colors, right? So this return, this return track here has this plugin by File Audio, and you could adjust the drive. So let's say we're going to drive it super hard, right? Let's listen to just the preamp. Um, I was driving the preamp. <laughs> versus just the dry signal with no preamp.
right? Let's add this in super loud, the preamp, the two preamp. This is both. You can hear that there's some distortion going on. I'll just bring this back and blend it in. I'll, I'll go all the way from zero and blend it in to where I like it. Now that you can hear what that's doing, let's go in the mix. I'll turn this down just a little bit because a bit much. Let's listen in the mix and mix it. Going to start from zero again, from like infinity, minus infinity. <laughs> Yeah, that just kind of brings this axe forward a little more and adds a nice color, which I like. Let's hear it with the LA 2 a compressor. It's a tube compressor. It has tubes in it. So let's see. So. There's a lot of distortion, right? That's happening, which is which is the color that I want. I'm overdriving it. I want that color. Now we're gonna mix that in as well. Let's listen to the mix. I'm gonna do that again. I like that characteristic that it's adding. It's giving some warmth, a bit of like, it's like a smooth edge almost, uh, how I would describe it. Just like a bit more body and a, a bit fuller. Let's add it to the guitar. much more low end that's added. I like that. Mix. I like that. I think it sounds good. Let's try it with the bass. That's the only way. In context. Yeah, so these are subtle colors that you could add it to your mix, right? But overall, when you work through this and you get creative and you add whatever plugins you want to add you have access to all these different tools that you can use as your paint brushes to enhance your mix so you know so yeah have fun make music hope this was helpful like and subscribe please thank you very much see ya